Mother, I don't know where she is right now, but all I know to tell you is she's praying for me, and I'm so thankful. She said, Shelly, it's about time that you help out. So here we go. I'm growing up spiritually, and by the way, we all are, and that is what our topic is, growing up spiritually. So bring your coffee, or if you don't drink coffee, your some kind of favorite beverage, and let's get into the Word of God together. What do you say? Excuse me for just one moment. Mm. I'm so glad there's a scripture that says, whatever we drink, eat, we do all for the glory of God. And today, as we're studying, we're using Brother Hagin's book entitled Growing Up Spiritually, where he likens... um, the new birth, a new creature in Christ Jesus, going from the babyhood stage to the childhood stage to manhood or maturity. And so we are on this day on the childhood stage. Let me just give a quick review. We found out that babies, when we're in the babyhood stage, they're innocent. You have that childlike innocence. You have no past. And that's an attribute that we should constantly keep in our, no matter how long we've walked with the Lord, just that innocence of the knowing that the efficacy of the blood is cleansing us and we have full childlike faith to believe him for wonderful things. But unlike, there are some attributes in the babyhood stage that we should not follow, like irritability. If we don't get our way, we have our feelings hurt. We have to be pampered, held, spoiled. We need to grow out of that. Uh, also in that babyhood stage, we found that babies put everything in their mouth, their fist, a balloon. I remember mother told me, Shelly, you swallowed a red balloon. How did she know? I won't give you that information. But anyway, figure it out. But that is an attribute of babies. And there's so much material. For example, there's so much material in our bookstores on prophecy. Some of them have even taken the rapture, the catching away of the church, the body of Christ, out of their books and wrapped it in scriptures. And what they've done is they've taken scriptures that applied to a different group of people, the Jews or the nations, and made it apply to the church. And so having violated rightly dividing the word of God And knowing to whom the scripture is speaking, they've taken scripture, yes, but they've wrapped it in the poison of their doctrine. And many places we go, it's amazing how many uh, born-again believers love the Lord, but through materials that they've read, they've been poisoned where they don't believe in the catching away of the body of Christ, the rapture. So we need to grow out of that. And the Bible says, as newborn babes, to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. You will grow by desiring the sincere milk of the word. And like a newborn baby, we should never outgrow our desire for the milk of the word. Uh, how many parents, you remember those babies when you bring them home and all of a sudden it's, and it's two o'clock in the morning. And oh my goodness, every muscle in your body aches from having a long day. And now it's two in the morning and that little one, that little baby is crying for milk. And you know, you walk in there and you could tell them, hey, here, here's a $20 bill. Be satisfied. You can buy you a toy. But no, they will not be satisfied. They have that desire for the milk of the word. And my friend, no matter how long we've been walking with God, we should have the desire for this milk of the word. I want to show you something about this desire that really helped me. A minister friend of mine from the wonderful uh, state of Oklahoma showed me this many years ago, and it blessed me. I invite you to turn to your Bible and and notice in 1 Peter chapter 2, and beginning with verse 1, wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guile, and hypocrisies, and envyings, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. 
And this is what the pastor said, and you know what? I got to meditating on it, and I believe it. Notice that the verse right before the milk of the word, it talks about laying aside. The Holy Spirit's not going to do it for us. And too bad, not even God's angels are going to do it for us. But you and I have a responsibility of laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, laying aside. Now think about it. In Numbers chapter 13, when the spies went into the land of promise to spy it out, and 10 brought back an evil report. That was evil speaking. That's what the Bible calls evil speaking. It was doubt and unbelief. Of course, we know cussing is, but did we know that doubt and unbelief in the eyes of God is evil speaking? So, laying aside doubt and unbelief, laying aside words of doubt. Now, this is what I thought was interesting. It it says, as newborn babes desire. In other words, when you lay aside the junk food, when you lay aside the evil speaking, When you lay aside doubt and unbelief, when you lay aside envying or jealousy, those are like potato chips and junk food that keeps your inward spirit, your heart, the real you from desiring the sincere milk of the word. You're filling up on the junk and it affects your desire for the milk of God's word. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was because I've noticed in my own life, there'll be times where, oh, I've got to have the word first thing in the morning. Give me the word. Give me the milk of the word that I may grow thereby. And I love it. Every morning I've got to have it. Uh, Before I even talk to my husband, I have to have the word of God. And it's just so wonderful. But I've noticed that my desire for that word is affected if I've been speaking on the world situation, how dark it is out there, how terrible it is. Well, of course, God's word said evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, but I don't have to talk about it all the time. I get to talk about what God's word says about it. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll cast out devils. In my name, they'll speak with new tongues. In my name, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And that keeps my spirit clear to, and keeps my desire as that newborn baby to keep desiring the milk of God's word. Praise the Lord. And so... We desire the sincere milk of the word. Now, what is that sincere milk of the word? Well, Hebrews chapter 6. Let's turn there. Now, I did not pre-mark these scriptures before we were recording. I wanted just the relaxed, go with the flow, learning together. And so, as you're turning in your Bible, I'm turning in mine. We're getting it right. Hebrews chapter 6. And verse number one, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto, there's that word, perfection. What does it mean? Maturity, growing up. Not laying again the foundation, and here they are, the milk of the word, the foundation of repentance from dead works. Number two, of faith toward God. That's the milk of the word. That's the foundation, faith toward God. Number three, the doctrine of baptisms. Notice it's plural. In Ephesians chapter one, it talks about one baptism. I mean, chapter four, Ephesians chapter four, it talks about one baptism. In context, you know that that's the baptism into the body of Christ, the new birth, where there says there's one Lord, one God, one faith, one baptism. So he's referring to being born again. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and believed that God raised him from the dead, you became a new creature and you were baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. But now we read in Ephesians and Hebrews chapter six, the doctrine of baptisms, plural. And this is the baptism including where men baptize a person in water. It's an outward representation of what's happened in their heart. 
being baptized in the body of Christ. And then the third baptism is the evidence of speaking with other tongues, where Jesus himself baptizes in the Holy Ghost, and the evidence is speaking with other tongues. So this is a foundation. The Bible calls them foundation. This is the milk of God's word that we may grow thereby. What's the next one? Well, if Hebrews 6 verse 2 tells us, and of laying on of hands. That's a foundation. That's a doctrine. That's a milk of the spirit, the laying on of hands. Uh, I, I'm reminded of when Moses is getting ready to go on. He lived a full life and he lays his hand on Joshua. And it says the, the wisdom, the spirit came upon Joshua because Moses laid his hands on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we read about in Acts chapter 13, there was at the church of Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, and beginning with um, Barnabas and ending with Saul, it talked about they prayed and ministered to the Lord, and afterwards, they, the Holy Ghost said, separate Barnabas and Saul to the work whereunto I've called them. And it says that they laid hands on them and prayed for them. So there is that doctrine of laying on of hands. In Acts chapter 19, it says that Paul, from his body, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from his body. That was that contact of con the law of contact and transmission, where those handkerchiefs, those cloths, were brought into Paul's body, and that anointing in Paul went into those cloths. They became storage batteries of the power. Reminds me of a story. I remember I was 20 years old. Working for Kenneth e. Hagen, his secretary, Doris, had gone on vacation to Paris for two weeks. And she knocked on my office door and said, I want you to take my place. She had a big, you may remember these, a big yellow legal pad back in the day. And she had written all the certain events that Brother Hagen would be a part of while she was in Paris. And my desk would be right there next to Brother Hagen's office. Now, on this legal pad, it had prayer cloths. And she began to explain. She said, in this ministry at that time, uh, in 1977, people would write in and they would bring a prayer cloth or put it in their letter and ask Brother Hagen to pray for it. If not, the ministry had a little cloth like this. And, the, and we would provide them. The ministry would provide them. And he, she said, now, we take, the readers will open the letter, take out the prayer cloth, and they bring it to Brother Hagen's office. And Brother Hagen, when he feels the tangible anointing of God, will pray, lay hands. We're talking about the fundamental foundation, the milk of God's word. We haven't gone off our subject. And he would lay hands on those prayer cloths with a tangible anointing in the name of Jesus. And Doris, his secretary, said, now don't make the mistake I did. Doris went in haphazardly, picked up the prayer cloths, and there was enough, enough power in those cloths that you know what happened to Doris? When Doris told me, I couldn't believe it. Now, first of all, you've got to see Doris. She looks like, now she's gone on to be with the Lord, but Doris had every hair in place, she had on these like St. John suits and matching high heels. And Doris is telling me, Shelly, I laid hands on those prayer cloths. The power of God went into me and I fell out underneath Brother Hagen's desk and I was there all day long. Now, as a 20-year-old looking at Doris, who then was in her 50s, I can't imagine her underneath Brother Hagin's desk with her beautiful suit and every hair in place. I knew then I was working for a supernatural ministry. I'm telling you, we are supernatural people, born again of a supernatural God, and there are supernatural laws that we get to walk in. And Doris said, I asked Brother Hagin later, why? And he just wiggled his thumbs. And if you ever knew him, you know, he'd just sit like this and wiggle his thumbs and he was thinking, he goes, well, he'd check his spirit. Well, did you have your faith out for anything? Did you have your hand of 
faith, believe in God for something? Doris said, I had to think twice. I had to think twice. I thought, well, I got up this morning and I had a little sinus drip and I just believed God in the name of Jesus by his stripes I'm healed. Well, that's it, Brother Hagin said. That was the hand of faith. You believed in Jesus' name and your faith went after that anointing in those prayer cloths. And that's why you received and fell out under my desk. So that day when Doris is teaching me, she said, whatever you do, when Brother Hagin says those prayer cloths are ready to be shipped to the people, be aware. Okay, Doris. So she got on a plane, flew away to Paris, and now it's my turn. On about day three, Brother Hagin comes out of his office. He has to walk in front of my desk to go out the door. He said, yes, I'm going to teach at Rhema Bible Training Center, and um, the prayer cloths are ready. And he slammed, he shut the door, and he's gone. So here I am, and I'm thinking, dun, 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 dun. Those prayer cloths are on his desk. So I walk in there very reverently, and I could tell that it was a place of prayer. I could tell that Brother Hagin was a man of prayer. He prayed a lot in his office, and it was just like something in the atmosphere, just the presence of God. Walked very reverently to the corner of that desk, and there were those prayer cloths. <clears throat> My friend, I stood there, and I said, in the name of Jesus and in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and in the presence of all the angels, I make this declaration. I do not have my faith out for anything. I'm in neutral. And with that, I picked up those prayer cloths and and I was able to carry them to my desk and make sure they went to the right people. Oh, oh, what a moment. Oh, but now here I am in front of you and here we are together and we're not in neutral. We have our faith out based on the word of God there's a scripture that says that God who started a good work in us is faithful to complete it and that we are going from glory to glory and being transformed, transformed into the very image of Christ himself. And we have our faith out for that while we're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's interesting. There is a law. We spoke about different laws, of the, the law of the foundation of our faith of the laying on of hands. But there's also a law of this. What you look at is what you feed on. And what you feed on is what you become. And so as we're growing up spiritually, we're not looking to ourselves so much as we're looking in the mirror of God's word and we're looking to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. And as we look unto him, we're being changed into his image. And how do we look unto him? By looking into his word. Isn't that wonderful? And so to continue with the milk of God's word as newborn babes to desire the sincere milk of the word, we said, let's go on to perfection. The foundation of repentance, from dead works. Number two, faith toward God. Three, doctrine of baptisms. Four, laying on of hands. Five, resurrection of the dead. Don't you take the rapture out of your believing. You read the letters and what God said through the apostle Paul concerning the body of Christ, the church. We have a rapture. We have a catching away. And it is part of our foundation and the milk of our word and the eternal judgment. So, praise the Lord. Now, babyhood. Now, last thing I want to say about that, about babyhood, and this is something I read from a dear man years ago, and he wrote this. 
Let's face it. To live in this particular world, you've just got to be strong. But notice that the Bible says, never be strong in yourself. God's word encourages us to be strong in the Lord. You take the promises of God and you wrap your life with them, your thinking, put it in your heart, your mouth, and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But without this strength, you'll be crushed or at least crumpled in life. It's, if this seems a bit on the grim side, call the roll of all the things that have happened to people. Pain, sickness, frustration, accident, disappointment, failure, to name only a few. But one thing every one of us must learn is how to have what it takes in order to take it. We're talking about growing up spiritually. Have what it takes in order to take it. If you haven't yet had to take it, you will eventually. Something will hit you well, you will find your head where your feet once were. And unless you develop some kind of inner maturity in your spirit to become more like the Lord, these, this thing may rock you. So let's look at some real sources of strength. And that's what this growing up spiritually is doing. We're looking to the word of God as a real source of strength, the milk of God's word that we may grow thereby. I thought this was really funny, and I don't want to miss this opportunity to share it with you. The first thing to do is develop some good inner toughness. Inner toughness, tough-mindedness. Now, remember what Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. Tough-mindedness is a quality of top priority. Actually, there are two kinds of people in this world, the tender-minded and the tough-minded. The tender-minded cannot take it. Criticism just cuts them to the quick. It hurts. Criticism wounds them deeply. Problems and obstacles appall them. Adversary and opposition overwhelm them. The poor, the miserable, tender-minded. But oh, there are the tough-minded. Those who've renewed their mind. Remember where it says in Romans chapter 12, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind? That's you and I. We're growing up in the things of God by looking to the meat and the milk of God's word. And we're taking every thought and bringing it to captivity to Christ who's seated at the right hand of God and we're seated with him. So we're the, ten, the tough minded. Oh, we don't like criticism, but we know how to deal it, deal with it. Now, this is what I'm learning. They carefully extract from criticism all the know-how that it contains, and simply blow the chaff away. Hallelujah. So if you're being criticized today, blessed are you. You're growing up out of babyhood, into childhood, into adulthood. And so we rejoice that God is a good God. He's coming soon. And shalom, shalom. We'll see you next time.